Hello everybody, my name is Roselyn de Bon. I'm currently a lecturer in media studies at the University of Amsterdam and today I'll be presenting about the Museum, which is also in Amsterdam. So the Museum is a type of Instagram museum, sometimes referred to as a selfie museum, uh, which are interactive exhibitions that are usually full of rainbows, mirrors, uh, ball pits, countless shades of pastel pink, and of course, uh, selfie snapping millennials. Uh, the first of its kind was the Museum of Ice Cream, which opened up in New York in 2016, sparked a wave of social media frenzy at the time. The formula proved to be highly successful, and many more of those types of museums opened uh, in many more cities in the following years. Uh, so at the time it was quite tempting to dismiss um, the Instagram museum as a fad, unlikely to find long-lasting footing in the art industry, uh, but these interactive exhibitions have become a genre of their own uh, since then, rather than simmering out after an uh, ephemeral uh, phase of social media frenzy. In 2022, we can find multiple of these Instagram museums in many major cities around the world. So before I really dive into the presentation, let's have a quick look at the introductory video that visitors get to see when they visit the museum. You do me a favor, raise your finger in the air. Now, point it at your chest. That's who we've been waiting for, because you are a work of art. And like any work of art, you belong in a museum. So let us put you on a pedestal to slowly gather dust. <laughs> Only joking, museum is different. It's a museum of experiences. It's a museum of your life. Online, you are a sensation. You are hashtag iconic. You've got millions of followers. You've got billions of likes. And here at the museum, we've cataloged every single one. You're our teenage dream. You're a superstar, a leader. You look out for the little guy. You clean up the beaches. You inspire us to be feminists. You are quite literally a gay icon. So take it all in. The past, present, and future. We've built an entire experience just for you. And there's only one thing missing. You. Welcome to you, Zia. So now I'll provide some uh, much needed context for what it's like to visit the museum as well. Uh, like pretty much all of the other Instagram museums you might encounter, the museum in Amsterdam takes its structural blueprint um, from the more traditional concept of a museum exhibition. So it's a string of separate rooms with several different um, art installations, uh, yet these selfie museums, they also reinterpret that structure by centralizing popular aesthetics that are sourced from the realm of social media. So instead of the art in the room itself, the visitors' photographic interactions with the rooms is basically considered uh, the main attraction. Asking whether the Instagram museum uh, should be accepted as part of the art world, as part of the established art industry, may not be the most productive question to understand their rapid propagation and their continued appeal. Instead, I think a closer examination of the Instagram Museum's position in between the art industry and the developing digital platform economy is much more needed. Through an analysis of the museum, the aim of my presentation today is to examine how Instagram exhibitions, Instagram museums, uh, function as novel spaces of entanglement between the material urban environment and image-based social media culture. And I will do so by uh, sharing three observations, three main observations I made after visiting the museum. The first one being uh, that, that physical adaptation of online Instagram aesthetics. Secondly, I want to look at the involvement of corporate sponsors as a process of infrastructural platformization. And then thirdly, the transmedial expression of a social self that crosses the online offline boundary uh, when visitors engage with the museum. So first I want to 
uh, dive into that idea of online aesthetics and their relationship with ocular centrism when we look at an Instagram museum. So as one can expect, the Instagram museum's preference for displaying appealing installations simply for the sake of selling aesthetic imagery uh, to its visitors has been met with a fair share of criticism. Uh, Alicia Beresnock, for example, a writer for a pop culture website, The Ringer, she criticized how these museums have a detrimental effect on everyday photography practices. And she wrote in her article, uh, now the proliferation of Instagram playgrounds has shifted mass photography towards images that are largely devoid of experience beyond the taking of the image itself. In other words, it's pictures of pictures all the way down. Reviews on other websites of Instagram museums like Artnet News or uh, NY Mag, this is also in earlier years, so back in 2016, 2017, they already pointed to the museum's superficial, fun uh, theme park characteristics, describing it as either a haunted house for digital natives or a Willy Wonka induced fever dream that is virtually custom made for Instagram. Clearly the experience of visiting an Instagram museum is understood to be a visual spectacle. Um, according to Colin Ellard, he says this is a method of making spaces more emotionally thrilling. So an effective strategy that even regular uh, curated museums use to bring visitors to their doors. I'm sure we've all noticed that this effective strategy or a more emotionally, uh, emotional styling basically of um, exhibitions and installations has developed alongside more uh, lenient approaches to no photography rules in existing um, traditional museums. Um, so there's no doubt that the appeal of visually perfect Instagram aesthetics, which are aesthetics that Lev Manovich has uh, termed Instagramism before, that these types of uh, aesthetics are indeed heavily reliant on the eye. And we can also look at the ideas of uh, Juhani Palasma, who identified this visual dominance more broadly uh, in culture and architecture, and he, he termed it uh, ocular centrism uh, as a defining characteristic of contemporary architecture within uh, his context of writing. So according to this argument, we are witnessing the widespread construction of three-dimensional vis uh, visual images in space. So Instagram museums could be described exactly as such, as retinal art. Palasma warns that this two-dimensional translation into three-dimensional space results in uh, repulsively flat, sharp-edged, immaterial and unreal structures and contributes to a loss of tactility in architecture. Now, this concern over a lack of substance resonates with the museum's critics that we just uh, saw some quotes from. Um, Palasma explains that spaces with such an ocular bias convert images into endless commodities manufactured to postpone boredom which turns our human experiences into shallow commodities in a fabricated dream world. So this is kind of the more critical perspective on a phenomenon like an Instagram museum. I personally though uh, suspect that this understanding of visual bias in Instagram museums should not end there. What we should do is nuance this criticism by taking some time to question the assumption that uh, a three-dimensional image inspired by and created for the sake of the two-dimensional digital image or for the sake of temporarily uh, postponing boredom is inherently a meaningless or empty experience. I don't think we should just assume that. Should we immediately condemn the act of taking the image of uh, being an end in itself? when we can also approach the social and performative action of sharing selfies as being quite a conducive motivator for physically visiting, visually stimulating urban spaces. This caters to a psychological need, Ellard says, of um, novelty, sensation. It motivates people to leave their homes and to spatially engage with the city. Now moving on to the second observation I'd like to focus on, which is the infrastructural platformization of social imaging. Of course, the entanglement of 
Instagram museums with quint quintessentially online visual cultures that goes beyond purely uh, aesthetic matters. The Instagram museum's appeal and popularity also rests on a relatively new business model that is proving itself to be quite successful. Museums like the museum, they do not only stylistically take after Instagramism, they also have inherited the platform's sponsored aesthetic, you could say. So just as Instagram posts have been turned monet uh, monetizable through sponsor deals and collaborative advertorials between influencers and brands, the museum has also been made at least partially profitable through strategic partnerships with the likes of cat food brand Purina. Uh, that was a surprising one uh, to me, uh, or the Rubik's Cube brand. Uh, but also Dutch teen magazine Tina. Many of the um, installation rooms are fine-tuned to offer a, a visually appealing environment that then simultaneously incorporates the sponsor's presence, uh, like a dinner party room with uh, pretty uncanny fake cats uh, styled to promote Purina's cat food, or a Rubik's Cube-themed room that challenges you to solve the cube as soon as possible, and of course document all of that uh, for social media again. So this development is especially intriguing when put into perspective of the platformization of infrastructure, which is an idea that Plantin and others have explained as uh, the development where media environments are dominated by corporate entities, platforms. Uh, so we can com combine infrastructure studies here and platform studies to then build a better uh, theoretical understanding of new digital objects of study in the media landscape. And I think this is a particularly suitable category of objects for approaching Instagram museums, since they are so incredibly reliant on their visual consumption online and simultaneously tie into the literal, literal media landscape of a city. So the commodified experience of sponsored visuals and environments is strongly linked to and capitalizes upon widespread habitual practices of uh, photographic expression through social platforms like Instagram. The position of the Instagram Museum as an infrastructural entity between the digital world and urban environment can be further explained through a more elaborative, uh, sorry, elaborative uh, appreciation of typical platform dynamics. Considering key features like affordances and constraints, how is the museum then shaped by its connection to platforms like Instagram? Because it's very much dependent, of course, on those platforms. Um, platforms are then, you know, they're designed to be extended and elaborated from the outside by other actors, provided that those actors follow certain rules. And if we see the Instagram museums as urban extensions of online Instagram culture, like a metaphorical plug-in, then the profit-driven rules it must follow in order to be successful become more evident. So since social media platforms have woven predefined communicative acts into this economic logic, like uh, visiting and gramming the sponsored rooms at uh, at the museum that is also an inevitable interaction with corporate interests, much like we interact with those corporate interests when we scroll on a platform uh, like Instagram. Engaging as a ticketed selfie-taking visitor ensures the museum's livelihood uh, as an urban space simultaneously strengthens its online presence, which again feeds back into uh, its popularity as a successful urban exten extension of Instagram culture. Then again, the museum is also thoroughly bound up with the familiar economic blueprint of the traditional exhibition or the traditional museum, uh, incorporating ticket prices, guided tours, even a museum gift shop um, at the exit. Uh, so rather than a metaphorical plug-in, the Instagram museum is perhaps more like a product of interoperability between the art industry, I would say, and platform economy. So it's an infrastructural mashup of its own kind. Moving on to my third and last uh, observation for today's presentation is really that idea of that extended and branded social self that also moves between the online and offline. Uh, the museum exhibits aesthetic and economic connections to image-based social media culture, but what more can be said about the role of the museum uh, 
visitor or the role or of the Instagram user as a social actor within that configuration. So where exactly does the Instagramming visitor find herself in this overlapping online, offline environment? Here I'd like to borrow some ideas from uh, Charlotte Champion. Uh, she said this is a social development that emerged alongside the rise of Instagram, where everyday photographic practices shifted from Bart's retrospective Ça a été, it has been, to the concurrent update Je suis là, here I am. Despite this move toward the self, Champion warns against unproductive cries that dismiss the Instagram photograph as a narcissistic medium or a typical millennial practice in which individualism and an egocentric perspective prevail. Even if we accept such claims at some level, which we can do that if we want to, we can accept some of those claims, uh, they do not negate the Instagram photo's social importance. That sh should still be researched, of course. And the social self is not only expressed in our face-to-face -face interactions, because we extend our relations through online connectedness and social media presence. So naturally this storytelling that we do from a personal perspective is still very much influenced by the specific platform we use to communicate. Uh, Instagram emerged as a 21st century instance of Kodak culture, you could say, following in the footsteps of earlier developments in the rise of popular photography. Uh, where Kodak culture started with corporate slogans like you press the button, we do the rest. And this still uh, resonates with the way in which Instagram users are part of a transmedia process that's based on a participatory type of co-creation, especially in places like the museum. Of course, these rooms are kind of designed already for you to take a specific type of photograph in. So the extended and now also brand itself on social media, which then also extends into urban spaces like the museum, is inherently a back and forth process between the digital and the three-dimensional, as well as the personal and the corporate spheres. And these transmediated types of selves that we cre create or present online, they, they impinge on our embodied selves as we increasingly spend our social lives in a feedback loop between the digital and the analog. To conclude this presentation today, there's no doubt that the appeal of Instagram aesthetics uh, in an urban space like the museum is heavily reliant on the image as a branded commodity and the self as well as a branded commodity. The rooms at a museum are three-dimensional spaces designed to be perfectly visual uh, so that they are digitally reproduced through two-dimensional photos and videos again on social media, yet this new type of ocular centrist architecture uh, does not make a visit to the pop-up Instagram museum an existentially empty or inherently meaningless experience. Uh, posing as part of a visual composition and sharing selfies involves an interaction with visually stimulating urban spaces, which produces an embodied exchange within a city's online, offline media landscape. And the position of the Instagram museum as an infrastructural entity between the digital world and urban environment needs more explanation through an appreciation of its platform dynamic. I think that's something we should look more into uh, in the future. An Instagram museum like the museum, we have to look at them, I think, as not just a conversation between the eye and the screen, uh, but also an exchange between the social self and the platformized city. And these museums are not going anywhere anytime soon.